me, Brave Michaela, again. I just wanted to tell you how my cannabis makes me feel. It makes me feel tired, like rest time tired. It makes me have the munchy munchies. It's an easy day to remember. Friday the 13th, 2012 was the day we got told she had a mass in her chest. Her oncologist came and said the chemotherapy wasn't doing what it was supposed to. They were going to recommend us to start considering full body radiation and a bone marrow transplant. We knew that wasn't necessary. We knew that what we were going to do would be right. So that day we gave her her first dose of cannabis oil. Six days later, it was in full remission. Medical marijuana is legal in 20 states and DC, but there are still legal use cases that are very controversial, like medical marijuana for kids. Some claim it's a wonder drug for epilepsy, severe autism, and to quell the harsh side effects of chemotherapy. Others decry the long-term effects of pumping weed into still growing bodies. We headed to the small town of Pendleton, Oregon, a state where medical marijuana is legal, to visit Michaela Comstock, an eight-year-old who takes massive doses of concentrated THC to treat her leukemia. Her family believes in cannabis's curative effect, that pot can literally shrink tumors. I like lemon. You like to eat Sour. Them? I can put bread in the dish. I'm gonna put this croissant in the dishwasher. No, you can't do that. <laughs> okay, fine. Where's gonna go then? That should make it all soggy. <laughs> Michaela is about to take the THC equivalent of a third of an ounce of the highest grade medical marijuana, roughly 10 bong hits. She does this twice a day. This is bubblegum and this is orange. And then I give them to daddy. A lot of people complain about it when they get too high. High. Too you know, high. The psychoactivity of it is very extreme compared to just smoking a joint. One pound will yield between 45 to 80 grams depending on your process. And how often do you take these? Every day. <laughs> and how do they make you feel? Energized and happy. So I take this and I'll fill up one side of the capsule. Sometimes I keep it in my mouth for a little bit so I can taste the flavor. Because <laughs> then it tastes yummy. In the conversation around medical marijuana for children, dosing is a major issue. How much is too much? Michaela's treatment is about delivering the most amount of THC that she can tolerate, psychoactive properties and all. This is like the medicine basket. Saturation is key in treating cancer. You have receptors on every cell and organ in your body. The more cannabinoids you can intake, the more effective the treatment would be. And it protects the, the nerves from the damage caused by the chemotherapy. Cocoa butter lotion. It's a cannabis infused essential oil blend that rolls right on. So it's just like a tiger balm, but... Yeah, you drop it right on your tongue. Yeah. Every now and again, Michaela likes to have medibles or infused goodies or candies and she'll eat these things on top of her oil. That's when she gets the more noticeable psychoactive effect. Michaela loves to eat these. You feel your dose kicking in? In the absence of any formalized production, the THC oil that Michaela takes is made at Stony Girl Farms in a DIY garage operation. There are a lot of people who, including the federal government, who don't feel that children should have cannabis. Mm -hmm. But we feel that it's more important to save the child's life than be concerned about the child having THC in their system. Can you guys take us through the process of making the oil? Absolutely, this is our processing area. The trimmings from all of this process, as you see, is going into here, is actually what we're going to be making the oil out of. Uh -huh. So we'll start by taking this and we'll put it into our food processor and we'll just quickly grind it up. <laughs> Uh, fire hazard is a very big problem with this. Make sure to do this outside, don't do it in your kitchen. We're gonna put one pound of material in this pot and then we're going to add to that 
two half gallons of 190 proof alcohol. So that's a really intense color, huh? It's very. It's a very, very intense color. In fact, there's there's many, many colors in that. When we start to pour it out, you'll see that there's lots of reds and purples and blues in it as well. It's really quite colorful. Watch the color of this as I pour it. It should be a real reddish color. Now we're going to take this mixture of alcohol and oil, and we're going to go ahead and pour it right directly into our fry daddy. Look at all those red colors in the center of that. What we're going to do is evaporate these alcohol fumes. We don't want to meet the fire department. <laughs> Guess what, that time is now. We don't want any alcohol room, uh, left for the patients. As you can see, it's quite thick. So if you touch it to your tongue, it's still a drop. Does this drop get me high? It very well can. Okay. In addition to cannabis, Michaela takes traditional cancer meds too. How do you think the cannabis helps her? Like well, the cannabis is made up, so Michaela really has minimal symptoms. It, she was very, very, very ill and in a lot of pain. She didn't want to eat and very thin looking. The very first dose of cannabis we gave her, she instantly said she was hungry and she smiled and she was happy. We get our baby back. She plays now and she's a child again. As much as Michaela's folks prize the palliative effects of cannabis, it's the drug's supposed curative power that makes them such zealous advocates. In conversations with Brandon, he often uses the word apoptosis. How exactly does THC allegedly shrink tumors? THC attaches to cannabinoid receptors in our bodies and translocates bad mitochondria in cancer cells to produce RNA that disintegrates the walls of the endoplasmic reticulum. Peer-reviewed medical studies have backed up this claim, but only to a degree. There is no control when it comes to this word called cancer. The only thing we did have control over was saying no to radiation therapy and yes to giving her cannabis. It won't work for every single person. It's not, every single person is different. And it doesn't just take cannabis. Come to the house at one. Michaela's become something of a celebrity in the weed world, inspiring other parents to give their sick kids cannabis, including their babies. Abel's first medicine that was introduced to him when we uh, started treating him, cannabis oil infused into organic agave nectar. Hey, He had um, stage three Wilms tumor. He didn't want to eat, he didn't want to play, he just kind of laid around all day. Then you introduced the cannabis. Yeah, and that day he made like a huge turn. Uh -huh. he, he started eating and playing and it was completely different. He was screaming, running around the house, you know, barefooted, like just a normal kid. At this point, we should mention that the medical community at large doesn't think that pot can cure cancer. And furthermore, that giving weed to kids presents more risk than therapeutic reward. Michaela's oncologist refused to comment on this story and never gave her a prescription for medical marijuana. A dispensary in Portland wrote the prescription, which is perfectly legal. Brandon has a dispensary card that allows him to be the delivering agent of medical marijuana. The way things work in Oregon is that each patient that is prescribed marijuana, even a child, is allowed a caregiver and a grower to grow six plants. Brandon is Abel and Michaela's caregiver. When Michaela first began her cannabis treatment, she moved into Frankie's home clinic. We visited his garage grow room and found another layer in the community of believers in the healing power of weed. You can kind of consider it like an alternative medicine hospital of sorts. Well, like in, you have inpatients, do you say? Well, we have had a couple, yes. Hmm. Doesn't necessarily work for everybody. Sometimes we get people too late, and, and different cancers, different diseases respond right. differently. And, and, you know, they won't let us do much science on it. So at, at this point in time, it is really a, if you're part of the pun, a grassroots movement, you know? <laughs> We moved here from the state of Alabama to uh, grow medical cannabis. I had a dream of uh, cannabis curing uh, cancer and many diseases. I woke up in the middle of the night, Googled, found uh, a movie called Run From The Cure. I found the information to be compelling. I ran in and woke my wife up and uh, 
probably sounded and looked like some kind of maniac and told her that uh, cannabis cured cancer. And uh, we started researching and we researched literally for months because it just sounds so preposterous. The condition against this plant, it's been so thorough for so long that to say that cannabis has any medicinal benefits, much less the ability to heal disease, sounds to people like you have totally gone off your rocker. I guess it took a, some researching to convince me that, you know, it actually that there was a possibility that it did cure cancer, which was very profound. And then um, Michaela came along. Witnessing Michaela go through what she went through mm -hmm. and seeing how well she did only further convinced us. Take a look at what other kids look like who are going through similar treatments. I think the evidence is overwhelming. She's the healthiest child on chemotherapy. Yeah. By She's a, a bundle of energy every day, all day long. It's not because of the chemotherapy. I yeah. do think it will be proven. You know, we're not legal federally. We're just going to continue to try to do what we feel is the right thing and hope that the federal government will uh, allow us to do so. All right, so we're going to read, if a peacock finds a pot leaf, the four Rasta pigs, they were known as medical marijuana patients, but Peter didn't actually know why they needed it. So he decided to stop by and ask. He knocked on the door. Who's there, man? One of the pigs called from behind the door. Hello, I'm Peter the Peacock from next door. They quickly opened the door and snatched Peter in. It's a good Rasta hat. He's got a bong. What can we do for you, man? The four Rasta pigs said in unison. Well, actually, I was just wondering why you need medical marijuana. The four Rasta pigs took turns telling Peter of how they'd been losing sleep ever since the wolf moved in down the street. Uh-oh. Eventually, they went to a doctor and found out they had insomnia. Their doctor recommended medical marijuana because it was natural and wouldn't harm their bodies, but it would help them sleep. Peter gets his medical marijuana license, tries it, it and finally he feels so much better. With a smile on his face, he fans out his colorful wings, and he is happy again, thanks to medical marijuana. Yeah, that's good stuff. Kevin Sabet is the director of the Institute on Drug Policy at the University of Florida and a former Obama administration drug policy advisor. This is Kevin. Hey Kevin, it's Krishna from Vice. So what is your general position then towards medical marijuana? Well, my position is that marijuana definitely has medical value, but we don't need to smoke, vaporize, or eat it to get that value. Medical marijuana, as it currently stands, is a joke. It's a joke. You know, we don't smoke opium to get the effects of morphine. It needs to be separated just like 100 years ago when we separated opium from its recreational and medicinal properties. It's something that we definitely need to pursue, frankly, with more vigor than we've pursued in the past. Why do you think that hasn't happened yet on the federal level? Because it should be lab scientists, pharmacists, and doctors in, in certified laboratories as opposed to guys mixing a, a mixture in their backyard and growing something in their basement. Don't use it as a cover for legalization and make it truly legitimately medicine. But for Michaela's family, weed is already a legitimate course of treatment. And then this is your dream journal? The Big Big Dream by Michaela Lynn Comstock. So what is this dream about? A big humongous ice cream. Lime, chocolate, and bubble strawberry bubblegum. Bubble I had a dream about a bunch of banana syrup all over ice cream. Mm -hmm. That's Rocky Road. That's um rainbow sherbet and that's orange sherbet. A bunch of ladybugs are crawling all over me. Oh no, what did that feel like? Ticklish. <laughs> Is it ticklish? Blueberry, root beer, and bubble gum. Big day. We're all getting ready for something. Do you know what that something was? That's a bunch of food plates. Oh. Now the big tree. Now the big tree. The big tree, the big tree, it snapped and broke and fell all the way into the river. It went down the hill, it went down the hill, it went down the hill, roll, 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 into the river, splash! I've got a bit of the giggles. So <laughs> It's hard to imagine what it's like to have your kid diagnosed with cancer, but it's clear that Michaela and her folks are empowered by what they believe to be marijuana's positive effects. 
They, like other proponents we met, have donned the robes of the converted with evangelical zeal. Whether weed might in fact be the cancer drug of the future remains to be seen.